I see that you brought an instrument with you. Um, I want you to say a word about your instrument and about some of the other instruments that are part of the uh, Sema ceremony, that are part of the Sufi uh, mystical tradition, part of Sufi spirituality, the role that they play. Especially the one you have, but also uh, the Ne. Um, the instrument I have here is called Al Oud, uh, O U D. So it's like the word wood without a W, oud. And indeed, the word oud in Arabic means wood. Uh, so rather easy to remember. If you find this instrument, its origin is actually Mesopotamia, probably a couple thousand years ago. Uh, and its uh, ancestors or other instruments have gone eastward and westward. The very famous story is that this instrument was taken um, in the ninth century to Cordoba, Spain. And Al Oud eventually, eventually became the lute, lute Al Oud, and that eventually became the guitar. So, in essence, it's the great grandfather of the guitar. It's a stringed instrument that does find a place in Sufi ceremony, um, but that's predominantly because uh, it's also a classical instrument, not just a folk instrument. So, the classical music of Turkey, the classical music of the Middle East, of Arab countries, often or if not every time, you will find an oud. And that ensemble is comprised of what we call a takht sharqi, uh, a, a bed, an eastern bed. Uh, and the instrumentation is often a plucked instrument like this, a lap harp that they call the kanun, uh, a bowed instrument often, either a kamenche or a violin, and one of the more important uh, instruments, particularly to Sufism, which is called the ney, which is a, an open hole reed flute. Uh, and as um, my uh, music bandmate uh, Knife would say, it's one of the most natural instruments ever. It's really already created. All you have to do is you drill a hole in it and drill other holes into it, and it really truly has this sense of uh, spirituality to it. And so it's no wonder that a poet like Rumi would write extensively about the Ney. Uh, he used it as metaphor uh, to the human being and the human soul, uh, particularly uh, as a reed when it's cut from its bed and uh, has holes drilled into it, it longs to go back to where it came from, which is why it makes the sound that it makes. So it's such a, a beautiful metaphor, uh, and it's very true. I've um, met others, uh, one friend of mine who created a genre that he likes to call techno-Sufi, <laughs> electronic Sufi music. His name is Mirjan Dede. And uh, he was telling me about the first time he was drawn to Sufism in Istanbul. He was just walking down the street and he heard somebody practicing the Ney. And uh, he was entranced. He, he was physically stopped in his place and just transported. And he started to play the Ney himself and, and just to kind of long for that sound. Uh, so it holds a very, very special place, I think, in, um, in Sufism and in, in that style of music. But the instrumentation in general, uh, with the exception of certain additions, comes with, you know, percussion instruments, comes with, uh, with time. Uh, but often the instrumentation you do find in uh, Sufi music or liturgical music, when there is some in Islam, uh, stems from the classical traditions. So very seldom will you find a keyboard <laughs> or a bass guitar or a guitar in some of these ceremonies. It's not out of the question, but more often than not, folks from different Sufi orders tend to hearken towards the traditional instruments. If you're in Turkey, because of geography, often it'll be oud, nai, uh, percussion, kanun, and a bowed instrument like a violin or kamencha. But Sufism, for example, in Pakistan, with Kawali music, uh, you'll find the traditional instruments of that region, uh, one of which would be a harmonium, uh, tabla, dholak, another percussion instrument, clapping, and uh, a huge chorus behind you tends to be really the, the norm almost everywhere, because in the end, this liturgy is really meant to be a group affair. It's not one person singing. It might be one person leading, but then everybody participates because you're meant to really feel the music, not only 
through vibration, but kinesthetically, because there is motion and movement involved in all of this too, which is probably a good segue into the dance. Before we do that, though, <clears throat> could you uh, play something classical or something that we might hear in the uh, Sama uh, on the uh, Oud now, just for a few yeah, moments? Yeah, for sure. This is a, a piece called E Ashikon, which, O oh, lovers, is what it's saying. And the insinuation is, O oh, lovers of God, O oh, lovers of humanity, O oh, lovers of the deity, or just lovers, people who love. Uh, this is one of the pieces that really stuck with me out of the repertoire from playing quite often with the Jarahi order. Uh, and there is an extensive repertoire of what they call ilahilar. Ilahi, like ilah, God, Elohim, it's all the same words, Semitic words. Ilahilar are the names for hymns in the uh, Turkish Sufi tradition. So this is E Khan.